You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the my generation will take the fall. The saints will cross the nation dead. It's a sex, the gods, the freaks, the frogs, the messing with me. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get it out. Move to the music, play that fucking music. Live through my music, yeah. Hey yo, welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to May 31st, 1999. This week we've got Raw in Moline, Illinois, while Nitro takes place in the Houston Astrodome in Texas, the place where this whole Reliving the War series is gonna end. Macho Man Randy Savage went on another rampage on Thunder last week while Ric Flair orchestrated a beatdown to Chris Benoit, and also on Thunder, MMA fighter Tank Abbott made an appearance and he got into a little scuffle with the dog-faced gremlin Rick Steiner. We're going to be seeing a lot more of Abbott in the future, so get used to that gorgeous face. The WWF meanwhile are going to get back on track after their tribute show last week and it's business as usual as far as Vince and company are concerned, so let's check out both shows and we'll see what happened. This week's Jam Up Guy did not buy a wrestling bio shirt, but he did get selected for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Steve McMichael for this huge accomplishment, and I think I speak for the whole Reliving the War community when I say we are absolutely delighted that your dream of a Hall of Fame induction has come true. Nitro starts off with Bam Bam Bigelow and DDP attacking Raven outside the arena. Poor Raven gets beaten up pretty badly and thrown in a dumpster while his tag team partner is nowhere to be found. Our commentators let us know that we're gonna see a cage match in the main event, Rick Steiner vs Sting, and check it out, Eddie Guerrero's back on WCW Nitro. Eddie joins the commentary team to talk about his car accident, he explains he rolled his automobile and he was shot out of his car at a distance of around 100 feet, he lacerated his liver, he needed reconstructive surgery on his shin and ankle, and he suffered a broken hip socket. Eddie says he's glad to be back, he took pro wrestling for granted and he hopes to be back in the ring very soon. Eddie also thanks Eric Bischoff for continuing to pay him, and Eddie says it was only because of Eric that he was able to put food on the table for his family. Our opening bout featured Hack vs Kidman in a hardcore match, but Tank Abbott interrupted the bout to announce that he's gonna referee the main event tonight. Tank says he's been inside a steel cage more times than he can count, so that somehow gives him the right to referee this Sting vs Rick Steiner match, I guess. Meanwhile, Hack begins filling the ring up with all sorts of toys, and while he is able to throw Kidman into a ladder, he has no luck when trying to put him through a table. Kidman goes for the shooting star, Hugh Morris runs down to push Billy off the top rope, the referee calls for the bell, in a hardcore match, and the fans boo the finish. Brian Nobbs then comes down to attack Hardcore Hack. On Thunder, Brian was invited to join up with Jimmy Hart once again, but he didn't give an answer. He still doesn't answer that question here on Nitro, but he does say he'll be as nasty as he wants to be. What a complete tit. Ric Flair's backstage with James J. Bebe Dylan, and he wants to confirm that Randy Savage's elbow drop has been banned. Dylan says, yeah, it was Rick who banned it last week. And Rick then wonders what segment he's on while still asking if the elbow drop is definitely banned. It's a weird little promo here that I think was supposed to show everyone that Flair still wasn't 100% in terms of his overall mental well-being. DDP and Bigelow come down to the ring and Paige says he tried to do what was right, he tried to apologise for putting Hogan on the shelf but the people wouldn't listen to him. Not only that, Hogan attacked him last week on Nitro, so next time Paige and Bigelow run into old wood from the hood, they might just put him on the shelf for good. <laughs> that rhymed. Bigelow confirms who took out the trash earlier on when he and DDP bumped into Raven, and DDP decides that the Great American Bash tag team title match should happen tonight on Nitro. Raven's been taken to hospital though, so when Kenyon and Perry Saturn hear about this challenge, Kenyon decides to accept on behalf of Raven. The tag team titles will be defended tonight on Nitro, and it'll be Saturn and Kenyon versus DDP and Bam Bam Bigelow. DJ Rand's in the Astrodome tonight and this upsets Kurt Hennig a great deal. Kurt's sick of Conan, he's sick of Rey Mysterio, he's sick of rap music, so Kurt thinks he should go to the DJ booth right now and sing a good old fashioned country song just to show these people what real music's all about. 
So Kurt walks up the ramp and Bobby Duncan Jr. shows up to hand Kurt a cowboy hat. The two men then approach the DJ and they tell him to beat it before Kurt starts singing The Eyes of Texas. But here comes Conan and Rey Mysterio to address Kurt and Mr. Bobby Dum Dum, as Conan likes to call him. K Dog says he and Ray don't have a problem with where Kurt and Bobby are from, he has a problem with their attitude. Kurt says if that's the case, Conan has a pretty big problem, and it all ends with a brawl that gets broken up by security. These two teams will face each other later on though, so that's something to look forward to. The corporate ministry kick off Raw with an in-ring promo while Van Hammer takes on Evan Courageous on Nitro. Let's quickly summarise this Nitro match because none of you care about it do you? We did get to see Van Hammer's big choco bill from the top row but he also hurt himself when delivering a superplex, looks like he rocked his head on the mat pretty hard here. He was still able to get up and finish Evan off with his cobra clutch slam though, nothing but a glorified squash match and I've no idea why this dude keeps getting matches on Nitro. Evan got in next to no offence and the match was about 2 minutes too long. The Undertaker said on heat that Steve Austin's going to get served up to the higher power tonight on Raw. The Undertaker symbol gets brought down to the ring as Jim Ross alludes to the greater power getting revealed on this very show. Shane takes great pleasure in reminding everyone about what happened in the Over the Edge main event. The Undertaker says he's now WWF Champion and there's nothing Austin can do about it. However, that was only Phase 1 and tonight Phase 2 begins. Tonight on Raw, the higher power will be here and Austin's gonna get delivered to this mysterious unknown entity. Austin's gonna look into the eyes of this greater power and Stone Cold will see his saviour and his guiding light. Vince McMahon then shows up, he gets a great ovation, and yes everyone, I know the allegations make things weird when watching all this back, but I'm not gonna cut McMahon out of reliving the war because he's way too involved as a TV character during this era. It's weird though, I know, and it's only gonna get worse. McMahon says The Undertaker screwed Austin and therefore Vince is gonna screw The Undertaker. The Undertaker's gonna defend his championship tonight against Stone Cold. Shane says the dead man would be happy to annihilate Austin tonight but the championship won't be up for grabs and Vince seems okay with that seeing as Stone Cold just wants to get his hands on the phenom. McMahon then says that he too wants to fight The Undertaker tonight, he wants revenge for what Taker did to Stephanie and how he turned the McMahon family upside down, and this impresses Shane so much that he decides to throw his dad a bone. If Vince wins, The Undertaker will defend the championship tonight on Raw against Austin, but if anyone interferes then the belt won't be up for grabs. McMahon says he has nothing to lose as he heads back through the curtain, and when Vince is gone, Shane changes the stipulation. If Vince doesn't win, then Austin will never get a title shot ever again. The corporate ministry head back up the ramp and fans think Raw's about to move on, but then the glass shatters and Austin launches an attack. Stone Cold was dressed up as a druid all along. The Union run down to back Stone Cold up, we get a massive brawl around the ring, the Union and Austin get the better of the ministry, but after a commercial break we learn that Steve Austin didn't want any help from the Union. Stone Cold's annoyed after losing his championship, but he has a chance to win it back tonight in the Raw main event. Next we have Billy Gunn vs Big Show on Raw while Roddy Piper wants Dean Malenko to share a few words about Ric Flair. Piper says Dean's sick and tired of Ric Flair and he wants Dean to come to the ring to talk about the Four Horsemen. Dean comes out and he makes it pretty simple. He says he and Chris Benoit didn't walk away from the Horsemen, it was Ric Flair who walked away from Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit. Rick comes out with double A and Dean says he and Benoit had to sit in the back for weeks while Rick came to the ring just to serve his own ego. Dean says it's not about Rolex watches, it's not about Armani suits, it's all about passing the torch. The established superstars of WCW need to realise that only the young wrestlers in the company can carry WCW into the new millennium. Rick says without Ric Flair there is no Dean Malenko and there is no Chris Benoit. There is no one in WCW who could hold the torch never mind carry it, so Rick isn't prepared to pass anything and he's not prepared to step aside for anyone. 
Arn Anderson says when he came out of retirement he did so to bring the horsemen back to prominence and this right here is not what he had in mind at all. Double A believes this can be all patched up and these men can sort out their differences, but Dean has no desire to commit more of his time to the four horsemen. Dean says he had faith in Arn and he believed in Arn, but he doesn't have that faith or belief anymore. The Iceman steps out of the ring and Ric Flair attacks Piper from behind. These two have a fight where Piper gets the better of Rick, and Tony Schiavone hilariously says, and I quote, Can you imagine what it's going to be like when these two face each other at the Great American Bash? Yes Tony, we can imagine what it's going to be like. We watched these two at Slamboree and it was an absolute travesty. Over on Raw, Billy Gunn I'm a nice man. Seems super confident as he steps into the ring, but that confidence leaves him when the Big Show throws badass into the air. Billy's punches have absolutely no effect on the big man and Billy pays with a chop to the chest, though his low dropkick is extremely effective and the Big Show gets kept down while Billy zones in on the body part. It doesn't take long for Show to get to his feet though and Gunn goes down after a few clotheslines. The big man signals for the showstopper and Billy decides to leave the ring. Road Dog Jesse James intercepts his old tag team partner, Billy gets counted out before Road Dog gets physical, and Billy ends up back in the ring where he takes the Big Show's choke slam. Backstage, the Stooges try to talk Vince out of this matchup later on, but McMahon says he has to do this. He has to get a piece of The Undertaker. And Beaver Cleavage is also in the back with his mother. He says he's scared to wrestle Christian because the brood are a bunch of hippies. And his mum says not to worry, she'll be right there at ringside to look after her son. Oh, fuck. Beaver Cleavage vs Christian takes place next on Raw. On Nitro we have got Conan and Rey Mysterio vs Kurt Hennig and Bobby Duncan Jr. Eric Bischoff has joined the commentary team as our competitors enter the squared circle. Kurt tries to sing to the fans inside the Astrodome again but he ends up getting drop kicked out of the ring. Bobby Dum Dum Jr takes a Bronco Buster from Rey Mysterio and Kurt teaches Bobby the ways of wasting as much time as possible on the outside of the ring. Kurt and Bobby then go in control when the match resumes, with Ray getting his head kicked in. Bobby then hits Mysterio with a shoulder breaker, and Kurt slaps Mysterio around a bit before launching him into the corner with a lot of force. Quick tags ensure Ray's kept well away from his corner, but the break comes when Mysterio slides under Kurt's legs and the former Mr. Perfect takes a kick to the chin. Conan comes in, the crowd goes wild, Kurt takes the rolling lariat followed by the K Factor, but when K Dog applies the tequila sunrise, Bobby smacks him with his trusty cowbell. Mysterio gets whacked too as the ref calls for a DQ, and it ends with Conan getting hogtied and there's nothing Ray can do about it. This feud is far from over, the war between country music and hip hop will continue on WCW Nitro. Steve Blackman is not amused. There's a black and white filter used for Beaver Cleavage's entrance on Raw and he starts his match off pretty well with a par slam. Christian replies with a front suplex and this makes Mrs Cleavage get on the apron to distract Captain Charisma. It doesn't work though and Beaver takes a spin and wheel kick. The former headbanger comes back with a springboard clothesline and he gives his mom a kiss on the outside. Mrs Cleavage then gives Christian a lecture, but Christian isn't going to listen to his opponent's mother as he drops Beaver with a big suplex. Can't believe I'm calling this guy Beaver. Christian hits his signature fallen inverted DDT followed by a fantastic elbow drop from the top rope, but the match comes to an abrupt end when the Hardy Boys and Michael Hayes attack Christian and Beaver gets a pinfall win following a reverse suplex. Mother and son leave the ringside area, allowing Christian to launch an attack on the Hardys. Christian's outnumbered big time here though, so Gangrel and Edge run down to help out their teammate. The Brood get the better of the Hardys and Michael Hayes finds himself in a bad spot, though the Freebird is able to escape the ring thanks to the Hardy Boys and he'll live to fight another day. Double J gets a shot at the IC title next when he faces the Godfather. On Nitro, Randy Savage cuts a promo. The Savage promo is short and sweet. He says there's a rumor going around that Kevin Nash won't wait until the Great American Bash to get his hands on the Macho Man. The world champ's tired of Randy making him look stupid and ridiculous, apparently. And Nash is on his way to the Astrodome to fight Randy tonight on Nitro. Savage says that no one here really believes that Kev can beat the Macho Man, but then Medusa comes bouncing out of the ring to inform Macho that Big Sexy has indeed arrived at the building, according to Gorgeous George. Macho tells Nash to come on out so Randy can push him back in the closet where he belongs, yeah, 
But the world champ doesn't appear. Instead, we go to the backstage area where DDP and Bigelow's taken out Chris Kenyon. God knows what this means for our tag team match later on. And when Nitro comes back from a commercial break, the camera focuses on an Owen Hart sign while Eric Bischoff explains that Owen's funeral was taking place on this very day. Eric says he hasn't spoken to Brett since the day of the accident, but he sends out his condolences to Brett and the whole Hart family. On Raw, the Godfather says he's taking Deborah after he wins this match and Deborah's gonna ride the whole train. So Double J's fighting for both the IC title and his valet, high stakes tonight on Raw's war. A diving clothesline gives Double J the early advantage but Godfather replies by hitting snake eyes on the challenger. Jared then ducks a clothesline and Godfather tumbles out of the ring. And after taking a ring step bump, the Godfather gets back in only to get taken out with a flying crossbody. Jared takes the Godfather's fallen power slam and he then gets set in position for the whole train. The Godfather hits his signature move, Double J hits the mat again following a big boot and that's when Deborah gets on the apron to distract the IC champ. One of the Godfather's hoes gets on the apron too and this causes the Godfather to get all hot and bothered. So hot and bothered that he didn't see Double J grab the women's championship belt. Double J smacks Godfather, he makes the cover, 1, 2, 3, we have a new Intercontinental Champion tonight on Raw. Jeff shouts Owen Hart's name before he gets handed the championship and remember, Owen was scheduled to face Godfather at the Over the Edge pay per view. Vince McMahon vs The Undertaker on Raw and, my god, Eric Watts vs David Flair on Nitro. The booking team's just trolling us now. If this was the work of one Kevin Nash then I tip my hat to you sir. You've made some monumental fuck ups these past few months but this is something special right here. The ultimate match of nepotism. David gets brought to the corner, he turns it around with some weird looking chops that have no effect on Eric. Eric lands a clothesline and David's a bit slow getting to his feet when feeding for more clotheslines. So Flair Jr gets out of the ring to talk strategy with his daddy. As David gets back in the ring, Eric Bischoff flat out says Flair isn't ready to be a pro wrestler. Begs the question, doesn't it? Why is he on TV then? David gets his head rocked on the top turnbuckle and it's got that signature David Flair awkwardness that we all know and love. He almost falls over when getting sent into the ropes. David then has a chance to lock in the figure four and... <laughs> I'm trying my best to keep it together for this one, but I'm struggling guys, <laughs> I'm really struggling. Flair gets suplexed back into the ring, Eric could have won the match a few times but he keeps breaking up his covers to dish out more punishment. Eric then enters my top 3 greatest wrestlers of all time when he pulls off a chin lock slam that I think he just made up on the spot but it still looked super devastating. And there's a pump handle slam right there from Mr. Watts. David's having trouble breathing right about now. Flair distracts the referee, Double A comes in and Watts takes a spine buster, David Flair picks up another win on Nitro and it's not even funny anymore. Actually it is, but come on, when your mere presence makes Eric Watts look like a ring general then you know something's very wrong. Right, over on Raw, The Undertaker and Vince McMahon make their way down to the ring. I think Vince would be happy to just get in one measly punch but it doesn't even look like that's gonna happen as the match gets underway. Austin watches backstage as The Undertaker destroys Mr McMahon on the canvas and in the corner and the WWF Champion takes a lot of pleasure in choking the chairman out. Mike Chioda tries to break things up and he gets intimidated by The Undertaker. So the referee leaves the ring and this allows Vince McMahon to hit a low blow. McMahon then brings Taker to the corner for what can only be described as a super combo of weak looking punches and all this does is infuriate the champion. The Undertaker starts wailing on Vince again and when the ref tries to break it up he ends up getting tossed to the other side of the ring. This leads to The Undertaker getting disqualified and therefore Steve Austin's got himself a WWF Championship match tonight in the main event. The Stooges come out to rescue Vince but they too end up taking a beating and Mike Chioda has to run through the audience to get away from the phenom. Backstage, Steve Austin says he's happy to get a shot at the belt but he reminds everyone that he didn't ask for any help. Not from the Union and certainly not from Vince McMahon. Next up we've got a Mankind promo on Raw and another Ernest Miller vs Scott Norton encounter on Nitro. Before the Nitro bout takes place, Buff Bagwell says he wants a match against Randy Savage and Ric Flair tells Bagwell that he isn't in the same league as the Macho Man. A more suitable match for Buff would be against Bobby Eaton tonight on Nitro. Buff agrees that Eaton's a fantastic wrestler but he wasn't sure if Bobby even worked in WCW anymore. Buff says this is just Ric Flair looking after the old timers as usual but Bagwell's gonna show everyone why Buff's the stuff and Bobby Heenan ain't enough. 
Ernest Miller comes to the ring and he calls out Scott Norton. This is getting a bit ridiculous. The NWO watch backstage as Scott beats the crap out of Miller and they cheer their boy on. But Sonny Ono passes Miller a crowbar and Scott gets knocked out. Miller wins this one via pinfall and the NWO decide to leave the arena afterwards because Scott's gonna be pissed when he comes around. I really don't know why they're keeping this storyline up and I don't even know why the NWO exists anymore. At the Over the Edge pay per view, Mankind was attacked by Triple H, and so Mrs. Foley's baby boy wants to get himself a little revenge. Mankind wants a hardcore match against Triple H tonight on Raw because Hunter attacked Mankind with a pipe, and Mick Foley does not enjoy a pipe job. Foley says the word in the dressing room is that China's been checking him out recently. China walked in on Mick accidentally when Foley was in the shower, and Mick says China wanted to, uh, she wanted to touch him in an impure way. Foley's a married man, and therefore China can't touch mankind's manhood, but China will get a look at Mick's merchandise later. Mick then says, if you smell where my sock is hiding, and I can't imagine The Rock being too happy with this blatant gimmick infringement. Rogue Dog vs Boss Man on Raw, Macho Man Randy Savage vs Kevin Nash on Nitro. Both matches are extremely short. Macho Man welcomes some J Bro into the ring who's pretending to be Kevin Nash wearing a dress, and every member of Team Madness gets in some offense here. Medusa's wearing something a little more formal this week, in contrast to her outfit last week. She gets in a few kicks before Miss Madness impresses with a top rope Hurricane Rana. Gorgeous George pulls off a second rope elbow drop, while Randy Savage pulls off his signature elbow drop, which, by the way, is supposed to be a bad move, but who cares, right? The crowd hated this, they chanted we want Nash throughout most of the match. I use the word match very lightly here, but don't worry, Big Kev will be on Nitro a little later on. The big boss man and Mick Foley had a fight while Foley was heading back up the ramp, so boss man gets a little softened up before his match begins. Still, he is able to pull off a big sidewalk slam, so it looks like mankind didn't do too much damage. We see the knee drop from the D-O-double-G and the crowd goes nuts, but they get silenced once again when boss man pulls off a spine buster. Boss man tries to use his nightstick, Road Dog tries to stop the attack, but Big Bubby uses his favourite weapon and the referee calls for the bell. Teddy Long has to take the nightstick away from Boss Man when he gets the opportunity to do so, so Boss Man takes a chain out of his pocket and Road Dog gets attacked with that instead. Road Dog gets destroyed while x pogs nowhere to be found. Waltman is in the building tonight though and he's actually got a match next on Raw. Backstage, Shane McMahon's livid about Vince winning his match via DQ. He's wasting a lot of good food right there and this clearly causes Viscera a lot of distress. Here's the 1999 King of the Ring brackets. The tournament got underway last night on Heat, and already Al Snow, Boss Man, Viscera, and Double J have been eliminated. China is also part of the tournament, making her the first woman to ever compete in the King of the Ring. Next up, it's the Acolytes vs X Pac and Kane, while over on Nitro, it's Buff Bagwell vs Bobby Eaton. The veteran Bobby Eaton got down and dirty at the opening bell, but Buff Daddy comes back with a monkey flip, a drop kick, and an arm drag takedown. Beautiful Bobby brought his opponent right back to the corner though and Bagwell got choked out, but Buff instantly replies with a crossbody. The two end up on the outside where Eaton takes a back body drop, he gets a little payback with a swinging neckbreaker back inside the ropes, but Bobby didn't have enough to beat Buff tonight and our match ends with a Bagwell back suplex followed by the blockbuster. Nothing special at all, Buff's promo with Ric Flair was more interesting than the match he had right here. On Raw, Kane and x pog dropped the tag team championships to the Acolytes. Fans knew something was going to happen when Shane McMahon walked down to oversee the matchup. Things played out the way you'd expect, with x pog scratching and clawing to get that all-important hot tag. Kane comes in, the big red machine cleans house, but when x pog goes for the Bronco Buster, Shane holds a chair up and Kid gets wiped out. The bump looked great, by the way. Kane then chases Shane on the outside, and this allows Bradshaw to hit x pog with the clothesline from hell, and the Acolytes win their first WWF Championship gold on Raw's War. Two big title changes tonight on the USA Network, maybe we'll see a third when Steve Austin meets The Undertaker in tonight's main event. A hidden camera has been set up in the men's restroom, and we see a GDTV logo in the bottom left corner. 
Mark Henry's taking a dump, Dalo thinks his partner stinks while Mark seems pretty proud of what he's accomplished, and yet this whole GDTV thing or GTV thing never gets resolved. Ed Ferrara said it was supposed to be for Goldust but Goldust ended up leaving the company before the reveal. Tom Green was pitched to Vince McMahon but McMahon didn't find Green entertaining apparently. Glenn Ruth was considered, also known as Headbanger Thrasher but that idea also got shot down, so the angle never had a payoff. Next up it's Ken Shamrock vs Val Venus on Raw, on Nitro Saturn defends the tag team championships against DDP and Bam Bam Bigelow. The big Valboski is now standing at attention for Nicole Bass, who would have thunk it? Shamrock and Val Venus have had their differences in the past when Venus went after Ken's dirty sister, so this is a match we have seen before. Shamrock looks for an early submission but Venus makes it to the ropes before hitting a spinebuster. Bass watches on as her man gets planted with a DDT but Venus replies with his signature knee strikes followed by a Russian leg sweep. Jeff Jarrett and Debra then walk down to the ring. Double J distracts Shamrock long enough for Venus to pick up a victory and if you're wondering why Double J did this it's because Ken Shamrock beat him in a king of the ring first round match. Shamrock chases Jarrett back up the ramp and even though he won this match, Venus wants to know where Nicole Bass was during this bout. Bass says she's sorry even though I really don't know what else she could have done here, but Venus says it's alright, Nicole can make it up to him right now in the backstage area. Ugh. DDP called Saturn stupid for defending the belts all on his own but Perry did a pretty good job at the opening bell. His middle rope dropkick looked great right here as did his springboard forearm and he's able to hit a belly to belly on DDP before clotheslining Bigelow over the top rope. We come back from commercial break to see Saturn still in control but it was only a matter of time before the numbers caught up to Perry. When the challengers go on offense it seems like all hope's been lost. Bigelow delivers a few fallen headbutts while Paige floors Saturn with multiple right hands. Perry also takes a sit down powerbomb from Dallas but he manages to kick out a two. The challengers continue to take advantage of this two on one situation by making quick tags and performing double moves on the champion. If this wasn't enough, DDP applies a deadly chin lock that almost made Saturn pass out but Perry gets his second wind when avoiding both a diving headbutt from Bam Bam and a diamond cutter from DDP. Saturn then delivers the Death Valley driver and somehow DDP kicks out, so Saturn delivers another DVD to Bam Bam Bigelow before Canyon runs down to the ring. Saturn slowly gets to his corner and Canyon gets tagged in, but all it takes is one hard punch from DDP for Canyon to hit the canvas. Page covers Canyon and just like that DDP and Bam Bam Bigelow have won the tag team championships. The fans are a little shocked that Canyon went down so easily and the commentators aren't too sure about it either, but there you have it, plenty of title changes this week on Reliving the War. Kevin Nash gets some revenge next on Nitro while over on Raw it's Triple H vs Mankind in a hardcore match. Team Madness get in their limousine, they're all very pleased with how this night's gone so far. They try to drive away but they get blocked off by a vehicle carrying wastewater or sludge and Kevin Nash then pulls up in a septic cleaning truck. Nash grabs the hose and he then proceeds to dump watery shit inside the limo while Team Madness catch all sorts of diseases. This explains Medusa's wardrobe change, she's wearing a bodysuit to keep the crop at an absolute minimum, though Macho George and Miss Madness took the poop water like pros. Nash makes a quick getaway, Macho's all angry, Team Madness begin to throw up and back in the arena the commentators get ready for tonight's main event. Nash then provides a voiceover while advertising Lewis Septic Services for all your savage septic needs. A fine little touch indeed. The Raw Hardcore match gets underway with a face buster from Mick Foley and a face breaker knee smash from Triple H. The two head to the outside and they end up fighting in the front row and even though Mankind manages to hit a clothesline when the two get back over the barrier, Hunter's able to answer almost immediately with a suplex. Hunter then finds his weapon of choice, the sledgehammer, he swings it at Mick but he hits the ring steps, so Mick grabs a chair as the two head back into the ring. Unfortunately it's Mick who takes a bump on the steel chair but Foley gets another chance after dumping Triple H out of the ring. Triple H tries to set Mick up for a pedigree on the chair but Foley counters it, Mankind then performs a catapult into the ring post, China swings the chair and Mankind takes a shot but Foley no sells it and this leads to both Mankind and China taking a bump at the ring steps. 
The competitors get back inside the ropes and Triple H takes the mandible claw. So China gets in the ring and she uses the sledgehammer to perform a low blow. God, that looked painful. Mick gets a little revenge by shoving Mr. Socko down China's throat, but Hunter takes this opportunity to hit Foley with his sledgehammer. Triple H wins this hardcore match and it looks like Mick's been seriously hurt. The referees come out to tend to Mick as Triple H and China leave the ring. The heels think they haven't done enough though, so they come back inside the ropes to wreck the officials and do even more damage to mankind's knee. Thankfully though, The Rock comes down to help Mick out, and this leads to Hunter and China running back up the entranceway. This is the beginning of the Rock and Saw connection right here folks. The Rock's actually showed compassion by helping someone out. Mick gets loaded into an ambulance as we get ready for our raw main event. So here we go, the end of Reliving the War episode 186. Raw ends with a WWF Championship match, The Undertaker vs Stone Cold Steve Austin. On Nitro, it's a cage match featuring Rick Steiner and the man called Sting. Tank Abbott makes his way into the steel cage to referee this Nitro match, the competitors then come out and Sting's changed up his face paint a bit. The cage in use here is a traditional cage that also has a roof, and Sting puts the cage to good use at the opening bell, utilising the sides and the ceiling to his advantage. A low blow turns things around for Steiner though and Rick goes briefly in control with a series of right hands, but the Stinger fights back with a dropkick and Steiner gets his head raked across the cage, the crowd's fully behind the icon tonight. Rick takes a Stinger splash while while trapped between the ropes and the cage, but he manages to dodge a second attempt. And this leads to Rick going back on offense, and Sting takes quite the beating here. Tank Abbott stands back as Sting gets thrown into the cage panels, and Abbott also appreciates a good chin lock when he sees one. Sting fights out, and Stanner takes a low blow, and this gets followed up with two drop kicks and two clotheslines. Rick fights back, he gets Sting in the corner, he performs an Irish whip but Sting counters it and Rick's in position for the Stinger splash. Tank Abbott pulls Rick away, he punches Sting and the icon hits the mat hard, and that's how it ends folks. Tank Abbott leaves the cage while Rick ties Sting's hands to the top ropes. So we have a swerve and a non-finish at the end of Nitro, if you already thought this was par for the course then you really ain't seen nothing yet. On Raw, Austin dashes down to the ring following the dead man's entrance, but instead of going after the Undertaker, he slides out the other side and he grabs the champ's legs. He then uses the ring post to do a little damage, and back inside the ring, Austin lays in the right hands. This was a great start from Stone Cold, but it gets negated with a few punches from the dead man. Austin drops the elbow before the two end up on the outside. It's Stone Cold doing all the damage here when he uses the commentary table and the ring steps to hurt the champion. He tries to use a steel chair, but the referee stops him from doing Doing so, and The Undertaker's first big move of the match is a backdrop on the exposed floor. The two get back in the ring where Stone Cold hits two clotheslines, The Undertaker fires back with a great looking big boot followed by a clothesline of his own, and then we go straight back to the outside where Stone Cold gets thrown into the ring steps. Austin takes a suplex at the bottom of the rampway before the match resumes in the ring. Taker finds himself in place for a leapfrog body guillotine, but that doesn't work out too well for the challenger. The Undertaker signals that this is the end, it's time for a tombstone pile driver, but Austin strikes first with a stone cold stunner and we now should have a new WWF champion. Paul Bear stops the referee's count and Austin casually slides out of the ring to punch Paul in the face before refocusing on the champion. The big boss man then runs down and he too takes a stone cold stunner. And our match ends with the whole corporate ministry running down and our main event gets thrown out. Another non-finish on reliving the war. Austin takes a beating before getting tied up in the top and middle ropes. The Undertaker then takes a knee as the lights go out and the greater power begins walking down to the ring. The rest of the ministry join the Undertaker and bow down to this mysterious figure, and after the higher power gets in the ring, the Undertaker directs him or her to Steve Austin. The greater power then shows Steve Austin who he or she really is, and Raw goes off the air with Stone Cold looking incredibly pissed off. Austin calls whoever this is a son of a bitch just before the show fades out. Raw wins reliving the war again, but neither show was great this week, in my opinion. We had no standout matches at all on either show, but the storyline progressions and promos on Raw were better than Nitro's efforts, not much else to say really. Raw's on 96 points, Nitro's got 71 points, and we've still got 19 ties on the board. In the TV ratings, Raw wins with a 6.3, Nitro scored a 3.3, a brutal number right here for World Championship Wrestling. 
For those interested, last week's Raw Zone scored a 7.2 while Nitro scored a 3.1, but that number was a bit more understandable. On Nitro next week, Ric Flair tries to bring the Horsemen back together by teaming up with Chris Benoit, Roddy Piper wants to give Buff Bagwell a chance of a lifetime, and Sting challenges Macho Man Randy Savage to a main event match. On Raw, the Lions then set up at the entranceway for a Ken Shamrock match, we've got Draws vs Al Snow in a hardcore bout, and finally, the higher power reveals himself. No, that's not good. I mean, the higher power shows his face. Yeah, that'll do. Thanks for watching Reliving the War, everyone. Thank you for subscribing, liking the video, all that good stuff, and as always, take care.